Hey everybody, happy Thanksgiving. I just wanna to read to you <coughs> Psalms 100, just so we are remind, mindful to be thankful because uh, I don't know why it is that Black Friday, the day where you have to get, 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 the day right before you are thankful, thankful, thankful. Does there seem a little disconnect there? So just, uh, just be mindful of what holiday you just came off of and how our children, it breaks my heart, are not hearing our true history. You know, read them, the Mayflower Confit Pact. Get books that were written in the 1960s because it seems like all of our good history has been scrubbed. Um, we have just the greatest country in the world. Of course, we're not perfect, but this country was founded on people that are escaping tyranny, escaping people telling them you can't worship God. That's why we came over here, how we need to remember <coughs> our history. Just tell your kids, look it up, Google it, if that's not scrubbed too. Um, just that, I love that picture of the pilgrims and the you know, Indians eating together. And someone even was, just was saying how, uh, it was Jack Kibbs, I think, about the five kernels of corn. Just remembering, that's all they had. They sacrificed everything. They didn't have this big bounty. Yes, the land was amazing, but they starved. A lot of them died when they left England, left the tyranny to come over here to worship God, to worship the true and the living God. But Psalms 100, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. I'm so glad things may be running out in short supply, but God's mercy will never run out. Hallelujah. <laughs> and his truth endures to all generations. Father, would you just speak to us now? Give us a word for somebody who needs just a specific word. Lord, may we just again focus on you in this busy time. Lord, may we stop and be thankful and counter many blessings. Lord, just enlighten your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, just finishing up um, one of my favorites. Jesus is the good shepherd. Are you wandering in need of care, guidance, and protection? Jesus is the good shepherd. And remember, again, he's the door of the sheep. I love that it says... Um, no robber or thief is gonna get in because I'm the door. There is no door. He lays across the door so nothing can get in to protect the sheep. And in the Old Testament, remember the sheep were sacrificed for the shepherd, but in the New Testament, the shepherd is sacrificed for the sheep. Never forget that he laid down his life for you. And again, get that book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalms 23, just to see the care, the meticulous care how God, Jesus doesn't lose one of his sheep. He'll go after the 99. I lo always love those pictures of him reaching down to that gully or that cliff. Um, and if he could have just said, oh, I have 99, I have so many sheep. But no, he went after that one. And I wanna look, read to you um, Isaiah 53, how we just always need to remember what Jesus did for us. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report and who, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Do you have grief today? Jesus knows he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, not his, but ours. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Wow, because he was beaten. We can have healing. Maybe not in this life. Maybe we're still going to be uh, not well, but we'll have a new body, body when we get to heaven. But he does do healing today. He's alive and well, the great physician. By his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. 
we have turned everyone to his own way, and that's the truth. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Wow. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Let God defend you. Don't open your mouth. As a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. You ever feel cut off? Jesus was cut off, so we wouldn't be. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he was offered up for our sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. You know, God could endure the suffering of his son temporarily because we would all be rejoicing in heaven forever. Sometimes we have to just see the suffering is just temporary, but we're gonna be rejoicing for all of eternity. Um, by his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. Have you ever doubt that Jesus loves you? He poured out every, every last drop of blood for you. And he was numbered with the transgressions, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. We've sort of just so sort of made light of sin. We don't really talk about sin anymore. It's just somebody's psychological problem. Sin is just to miss the mark. And if you just wonder how serious sin is, I mean, look at the cross. Why would he have to punish his son in such a violent way? Nobody suffered more than Jesus did on the cross. He was bloodied, bruised, and broken for you. And you know what? You're washed. You're cleansed. Doesn't that just make you feel so uh, just light? I mean, that uh, Christian in the Little Pilgrim's Progress, you know, that carrying that big black burden till finally he's like, oh, who will deliver me from this burden? Who will deliver me from this burden? He goes the way of the cross. And as soon as he sees the cross and the man on the cross, he said the tears rolled down his face and his black burden just rolled off his back and it rolled into the sepulcher never to see it anymore. I love that part of the story but the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin and sin separates us from God. Again, we put sin so lightly, you know, we're obsessed with wholeness, whole foods, eating right. And don't, don't get me wrong, it's so important because you eat junk, you feel junky, you eat good, you feel good. But um, I wish we were that obsessed with what we put in our brains, how much we're on social media, because whole, holiness just means wholeness. You're, you're put together, sin pulls you apart piece by piece. You want to be, sin is like eating junk food or actually drinking gasoline. That's how bad sin is for your body, for your psyche. Sin depresses you. Tell your kids that. Sin pulls you apart piece by piece. But again, you know what? You never forget your rescuer, do you? You know, I love those stories where, um, you know, somebody's a perfect stranger until they rescued, you're rescued by that person. Now that firefighter now, or that police officer, comes to Thanksgiving every, cause they're, they're part of the family. You saved my life. <laughs> you never forget your rescuer. I remember my mother, um, she said she was out, went further than she planned. And she was, nobody noticed. She was starting to go, lo losing strength or I guess she didn't swim very well. And my uncle spotted her uh, just at the last second. She was just going under. And of course, he's her favorite uncle, Uncle Joe. <laughs> he's her favorite uncle, she, he rescued her. And you never forget your rescuer. Never, ever, ever will you forget your rescuer. But I love this story, um, you know, the sheep and the shepherd, but there was a sheep stealer, you know, years ago in this old town. And I guess in this town, when you did something bad, they wanted you to remember. So they would put a S on your shirt for a sheep stealer, or, or maybe you were a murderer, they would, an M, something. But this, you know, this poor man, I guess he was, I'm not sure why he stole it, but anyway, he wore an S on his shirt and some new people came to town and, you know, but the years went on and he was sorry, he was repentant, he worked so hard. Um, but some of these people came to town and they said, what on earth is that man wearing an S on his shirt for? And it's been so many years and these people stopped and they thought, they said, hmm, 
because he was such a good man at that point, he had just totally changed. They said, I think it means he's a saint. <laughs> I think it means he's a saint. I love that. He had been so changed. I think it means a saint. And there was a story of a, a pastor um, in a church, and there was a, one particular woman who was serving in the children's ministry, and she was amazing, just, just an amazing gal. And the pastor's son started taking a liking to her and started, wanted to find out, now, who is this girl? And come to find out, she's had quite a past, quite a past, fill in the blank. And uh, when he wanted to marry her, there's a big scandal, a big division in the church. Oh, no, you can't marry her. You don't know the kind of past she's got. And then some were like, oh, it's a beautiful story. Oh, what an amazing story. God's going to rescue her uh, with, this, with this wonderful man. But there was a huge divide in the church, so bad, to where the pastor's son said, Dad, I need to address the church. And the dad said, sure, son, say what you have to say. And he got up there and he just said, people, my a fiance is not on trial, but the blood of Jesus is on trial. Do you really believe it can cleanse from all sin or can save to the uttermost or to the guttermost? And there was kind of a hush in the sanctuary. They realized, God forgive us, yes, she's a new creature. She's a new creation. So how we have to just never, never take light of your salvation. Never take light. I know things might be really, really bad right now. The, our country, I don't, we don't recognize it anymore. I feel like it's in the throes of death. Um, how we need to pray, how we need to be on our knees more than ever, and how we just need to remember what God has delivered us from. You know, taking us out of, of a land that was just ruled by tyrants and telling us you can't go to church, you can't do this, you can't do that. Gee, does it sound a little bit familiar today? God help us. But you know, it seems like it's always darkest before the dawn. The darker it's getting, wow, we can shine so brightly. We can't really see stars. You go to LA, you can't, those poor people don't see stars. We in Jersey, New York City, people don't see stars. But when you go to Montana, or you go out to the desert at night and you look up, it'll take your breath away. Not only do you see a shooting star every minute, there's millions and millions of stars and you see how big God is. So when we think things are falling apart, things are falling into place, remember the cross, remember your salvation story. Maybe tell one of your relatives how you got saved. They can't argue with that. They can argue pretty good. <laughs> um, just like we did before we were saved, right? There would go I, if not for the grace of God, but things are not falling apart, they're falling into place. But tell, share your testimony. Share how God rescued you. Never forget, and you have so much to be thankful for. Put on an old Pilgrim movie. Put, put on a Remember the Pilgrims, okay? Get the Charlie Brown, not the silly one where Snoopy's got jelly beans on the table and potato chips. Now, that's cute, but there's a Charlie Brown where they actually came over the Mayflower and they explain the story. I don't know. Um, but anyway, find the true history of our country and just remember, are you wandering in need of care, guidance, and protection? Jesus is the good shepherd who will go after the sheep and never forget you. I love that. Lord, to wander, Lord, I feel it. Help us to stay close to the good shepherd. Our life depends upon it, doesn't it? God bless you. I hope you have the best Thanksgiving ever. God bless you.